looking to build an Anglo-Saxon or Nordic style village in the vein of West Stow, Falbau, Edoras. This tutorial series will show you how to make a village fit for any Jarl, their thanes, freemen and slaves. We're going to start today with the smallest, simplest houses, which will show you the basic method for building any house in this style. So for any buildings in this series, you're going to need the following. Logs of your choice, planks, slabs, and stairs. Pressure plates for spawn proofing, fences, gates, and spruce trap doors for decorating. Spruce doors are the best type of doors to use for any of these builds, and optional stone and cobblestone for flooring. We're gonna start with the smallest house, which is five by five. A nice little square. While this system can easily climb up and down elevations, I'm going to start with showing you how to build on the flat. And for these smallest houses, I recommend oak logs because anything darker tends to get a bit overpowering on this scale. So we're going to start at the corners. And at each corner, we're going to put a column of three oak logs. Once you've got your four columns, join them up with oak logs again. This forms our basic frame. Now the next thing is to add a roof. Now I'm going to make the roof in spruce and I'm going to begin by running stairs along the sides and the back, but leaving the front free. So right way upstairs, all the way around. When you get to the front, extend it by one either side and then put an upside down stair on the inside. Okay, we're gonna continue our roof up and each row we're going to put upside down stairs on the inside. And when you reach a point where there is a one block gap, which on this size house should be three rows of stairs, at the front put an upside down stair and then top it off with slabs that match your roofing material, in this case spruce, and bring it out one more at the front make a little overhang. That's our house structure finished. Now we just have to add walls. Pick planks of your choice and fill in your walls. Leave gaps for windows where you want them. And don't forget to fill in the gable end. Now as it stands, this roof will leak in the rain, so you can waterproof it by adding upside down stairs and extra slabs on the inside. Add a couple of torches for light. Now we're gonna replace the floor. You can replace it all with stone or you can use wood. And if you're gonna use wood, I suggest a different one to the walls and roof. I've used jungle just because I like the colour. Finally, add a spruce door from the inside so that it's recessed. Now, windows, I'm not putting in glass. Instead, I'm using fences, in this case spruce, but you can use a fence of whatever you want. Decorate the inside how you like. On the outside, there's a little bit more we can do. You can run fences up the sides of the logs. You can match it in with the planks or you can use a contrasting colour if you want. Match it with the roof. And then along the front here I've got gates which stand in for decorative carved wood. That's our first little tiny house. A little bit of a different roof straight at the front, slope at the back, but it has got historical precedence. So I'm going to make another house now that is 
cups. This was five by five, this is six by six. And I'm doing this because when you work on an even number, it changes the roof slightly. So again, I'm gonna start at the corners and I'm gonna make pillars of three logs. Right, we're gonna build the roof exactly the same. So stairs round three sides, upside down stairs on the inside. But this time we're gonna continue up until the stairs meet at the top. And this time that's four rows, like that. But we're going to put extra stairs sticking out the front. Now you can leave it like that or you can put horns on top of the house. So upside down stair, upside down stair. And if you choose this, remember to spawn proof them with pressure plates. I actually think on a house that size that's a little bit of overkill, it's a bit too big. So I'm just going with the overhang. Now just fill in your walls and decorate with fences and gates just as you did with this one. I think we'll do that. And of course don't forget torches and waterproofing. Basic little house number two. We're going to do one more and this house measures seven by eight. So a little rectangle. Again, we're going to start at the corners. I'm going to take it up four this time because we're just coming up one block here. So this will be three. If you're building on the flat, just make it three blocks high. And join up your columns. Roof time again. This time though, we're going to take our stairs for roofing right the way around the entire building. So it should look like that. Now we're gonna build up another three rows the same. So all the way around, front, back and sides. That's it. Now at the top, you've got a gap of two blocks by one. Don't top it with slabs. Instead, we're gonna put a waste block in and then a right way up stair and waste block and right way upstairs. So the stairs are facing into each other and you end up with little horns on the top. Now we're gonna come down here and we're gonna fill in the walls as we did before. If you want, you can add extra log columns if you wanna break up these walls a little bit. It's entirely up to you. And remember to leave gaps for windows where you want them. Now while I've waterproofed the top part of the ceiling, this time instead of waterproofing the bottom part, I'm going to add some trapdoor shelves and some chests for storage. I'm also dividing this room up a little bit because it's sufficiently large and making a little alcove for a bed. I'll get around to decorating these later. Just adding a step up and then decorating the outside again with fences and gates. And that's it, a very simple little house. We will spruce these up a bit more but for the moment this is just basic structure. So here's another little house, this one is five by six. Because it's an even number, it's got the stair overhang instead of the slab overhang. And because it's going up one in elevation on the side, I just built it into the side here and made the columns here one block shorter. So that's four small basic houses. Now I've made a couple more variations over here. This is a five by six, but I've given it a little pyramid roof. On a house this size you really can't do the stair horns, it just ends up 
too tall and a bit disproportionate for the size. And over here, I've made some small houses that account for changes in terrain. So this one starts off at ground level and then the mountain rises quite steeply. So I just made it a two story house. Very simple to do. We've got the basic structure down here. Pillar three columns high, joined by logs. And on top of it, I put exactly the same. Three blocks high, joined by logs. Inside, come up a ladder and we've got a little bedroom. And the reason I've run the ladders all the way to the top is so that villagers can't get stuck on the top of ladders, which does happen. And if you're wondering where they all are, they've got themselves stuck down there. Now, this one is another seven by eight. And again, the terrain rose, so I just added a second story, but instead of adding it for the whole floor, I added it for half the floor. So the front half has got the same roof as that, whereas the back half has got the roof of the smaller houses. And it's quite easy to do again. I just picked a point where I was going to run log columns all the way up, and that's what I did. And again, it's straddled by logs. So if we come inside, I've divided the room up a little bit. We've got a ladder again that goes all the way up. And in here, we haven't got enough light. I've got a little alcove for a bed and I have waterproofed the ceiling. So that's our small houses. I'll knock out a few of these houses here and build some more small houses because this is the um, poor area of the town, the area with the slaves and the lowest of the freemen. And next time, we'll talk about medium-sized houses.